So, um, as I said, we the Public Safety Committee met on July 13th to uh, discuss one item, uh, number 382-22, request for authorization um, on the number of police officers detailed at each polling place for elections. Under the state, the new state votes act, um, the uh, city council in Newton has um, the authority to uh, determine the correct, the plan for the correct number of uh, police officers to be detailed at polling locations. Uh, this has been previously done by the police chief in consultation with the um, chair of the, uh, the, the, the city clerk who, who supervises elections. And um, our job was to approve a plan for the prime, in time for the primary. Um, we had a robust discussion um, about both uh, the number of officers who might be available to, to do this job. It's on overtime um, and is considered a detail. There are two shifts that need to be covered. And we have 25 polling locations. Many of them are in schools. Um, the plan that you would have seen in your um, packet um, gives you a total of, I believe it's 32 officers that would cover um, the various polling locations. And then there would be an additional one whose job is not just ballot security, but also security of the polling place. Um, that uh, would, you know, that is, that is what the chief and the city clerk uh, together came up with. And it is partly based on requests uh, for, by principals and others for additional security at the polls. Our discussion revolved around whether to set a floor on the number of police officers. Um, where we landed was on having a, uh, a floor of one officer per polling location, which is 25, and to leave the additional security officer at the discretion of the police chief in consultation with the city clerk, which is how it has been done until now. Um, and that passed five to two. Thank you, Councillor Grossman, you put this on second call. I did, thank you, Madam President. And I will try my best to explain clearly why I put this on second call and what I hope to achieve. So Councillor Downs very much, um, it, it very completely explained what our discussion in ps &T entailed. And um, at that meeting, I actually voted no on the current plan. And the reason for that was we were speaking about these different school locations. And we had a lot of discussion about why do we have some officers, some additional officers at some school locations and not at other school locations. And essentially we were getting into a discussion about what is needed to ensure the public safety at those locations. And I voted no because I didn't feel confident in saying that the plan before us did or did not ensure the public safety when we're talking about opening up schools and having the public and adults that you know kids don't know and otherwise do not have permission to enter these school buildings to be coming in, particularly in an era where we all know uh, what school safety concerns are on all of our minds. Um, and we don't even let parents come into these schools. So that's why I voted no at the time. Um, then in between then and today, I received a call from a constituent who was concerned about the ability to add additional officers to one particular school location. Uh, and having received that concern, I reached out to the police chief and said, you know, chief, my understanding is this action we took at ps &T means that, uh, you know, you're going to have the discretion to do what you need to do and adding extra officers for public safety. You know, what, what do you think the plan should be for this particular location? And that brought up a whole lot of confusion because it, it was very unclear um, whether or not 
the city council was dictating to the chief where we may have officers or whether the chief and his colleagues still had the public safety authority to add additional staffing uh, where they saw fit. And I thought from our ps &T discussion that our legislative intent was clear that we still wanted the police to retain that say and that ability to staff polling locations as they saw fit to ensure the public safety. Um, and to me, that only makes sense. I mean, here I'm talking about an example where uh, we, we know this location in question, we know what the concerns are. But imagine a situation where two or three days before an election, uh, the police become aware of a specific threat or some previously unforeseen complication in a polling location. It makes sense to me that they should have the authority to um, staff that location and provide police support as they see fit. Um, but uh, I think that was not that was not totally obvious. And um, as a result, I ended up having a conversation today with our city solicitor and with our city clerk to get the city solicitor's opinion on what action we were exactly taking tonight and what we were trying to do. So the outcome tonight that I'm hoping for is just to make a clear record. And I think everyone, the city solicitor, uh, our city clerk, and I'll let her speak for herself, if she of course would like, and our chief, um, that we're establishing a record that what we are doing here is establishing a sufficient number of police officers to quote, preserve order and to protect the election officers and supervisors from any interference with their duties and to aid in enforcing the laws relating to elections, end quote. But that does not limit the authority of the chief of police, chief of police to utilize additional police resources that he deems necessary to address any public safety concerns. Um, and this really pertains just to this September preliminary election. It's gonna come back to committee for us to discuss it again before November which I think is another opportunity for us to clarify what this new law means and what we're trying to do. But as I've dug into it and had these conversations and reread the statute a bunch of times, I see our responsibility under the new law as ensuring the integrity of elections. And I still see the police and uh, the chief's responsibility of ensuring the public safety separate and apart from that. So I suspect that that's where our discussions will entail going forward. Um, but by bringing this up tonight, all I wanna do is ensure that the chief can still have these ongoing conversations for those locations that feel that they need additional security for this upcoming September election to be able to do so and for him to feel comfortable that that is uh, okay within the confines of our actions in this law. I hope that was, clear and thank you. Thank you, Councilor Grossman. I think it's not, um, the, you know, the legislature made this change, taking the responsibility away from the police chief and giving it to the city council. And I, I don't think we exactly have the procedures in place yet. I think we have enough in place now to move forward for the September primary, but I think you are right to raise the issues and, and more discussion is needed for the procedures and how to make this work. So we have a few hands raised. I'm going to take Councillor Downs first and then Councillor Baker. Councillor Downs. Um, thank you. I really appreciate Councillor Grossman bringing this up so that the record is absolutely clear. Um, to me, the second and final motion that we passed five to zero was fairly clear and I'll read it for the edification of the public. Um, the motion uh, Councillor Maliki made was to approve one officer per location. That would be then 24 since we have 24 locations with additional officers. So that's your floor. Uh, additional officers being assigned at the discretion of the police chief in consultation with the city clerk. Um, that to me is crystal clear that our intention was to establish a floor and allow the people closest to the information about what threats might be out there, as well as the configuration of different buildings. And some buildings have separate entrances that can be secured and others do not. Um, that, that, that then can be uh, made at, the, at, the, at, at, the, at that level 
so that they have the flexibility necessary to do the best thing. Thank you. Councilor Baker. Thank you, Madam President. I think, um, as I think I heard Councilor Grossman, but part of the difficulty is the sound quality in the chamber is not, I'm sure, as good as it is at home. But uh, I just want to confirm that as a result of her inquiry and, and uh, further analysis that she is prepared now to support this item. Is that correct? I, I just believe make... that's correct. Councilor okay. Grossman, can you confirm? That is correct. And, and I'm not asking for anything different than what I saw as the outcome at the PSNT meeting. Uh, but given the various background conversations I've had over the last couple days, it was clear to me um, and the chief and our city solicitor agreed that having this really publicly crystal clear and the record established before the full council tonight was important for the chief to feel that he could move forward with the possibility of adding additional officers beyond what this memo says if he sees fit. Thank you for the that, clarification. That's the I, only reason I, I put it on. Councilor Leary. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I appreciate Councilor Gro Grossman raising this um, and being more clear about what exactly um, we're doing here with this item. Um, I think it is important to allow our chief of police broad discretion um, in terms of public safety regarding elections. But something to think about going forward is I really um, question whether our schools should be polling places at all. And I would love to see a plan um, going forward to explore that and to find alternatives to schools, because I do think there is an inherent safety risk, especially with our elementary schools, um, allowing members of the public, um, they can't always be, um, you know, sealed off from where the children are. So that's, that's just something that I wanted to raise. And also maybe a more discussion about the role of the warden in terms of um, the integrity of the elections and how they go about their work. But I plan to vote in favor of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Leary. Is there anybody else? Okay, seeing nobody else with hands raised, could you call the roll on this item? Motion carries with 20 yeas, zero nays, and four absent. Okay, so I think our work here is done. We are adjourned, and let's hope for a little cooler weather for our September Ma meeting. Madam President? Yes. I noticed that there's a large number of folks in the attendees who must be here for the senior center. I wonder if we should just make a statement to make sure that they understand that we did pass that on first call. Sure, so there, the senior center is officially approved now by the city council and the site plan review and the funding is a done deal. And um, we're all looking forward to a new senior center. <laughs>